Mr. Jack Nash, President of Convair. As President of the Convair Division of the General Dynamics Corporation, I want to welcome you into the family. We're glad to have you with us, and we hope your stay will be long, happy, and mutually productive. Our family have been working together for over 30 years, and during that time, the name Convair has become a trademark synonymous with quality and performance. During that time, our diversified efforts have produced some of the outstanding weapons in the inventory of national defense. That sound you are hearing is a Convair all-weather interceptor. It is a sound you will be hearing frequently, and in a way, it is the sound of Convair. It is a sound which you will be hearing with names such as Dagger, Dart, Hustler, and Atlas names you will become more familiar with before this film ends. Convair not only has had an interesting history and an exciting future, but it has a tremendous responsibility. Most manufacturing concerns, producing as they do items for the comfort of life, are preoccupied with pleasing their customer. We have a much graver responsibility. We must see to it that the weapons of our national defense are so superior that no other nation would dare attempt to invade us. In other words, our business is concerned with protecting the American way of life, which is looked on so jealously by our potential enemies. Here in San Diego are located the general offices of the five Convair divisions, which are located in California and Texas. Since you will be working in the San Diego division, I would like you to meet someone who joins with me in saying, welcome aboard. Hello there. I'm Sandy Cogan, Vice President and Manager of Convair San Diego Division. And I'd like to emphasize those words, welcome aboard. We're sincerely happy to have you join us. Because we realize we must have good people like yourselves to help us maintain the position we have gained and also to meet the greater challenges of the future. This is now your future, too. But I wonder how you are feeling right now. A bit confused, probably. Maybe even worried that I'm going to make you listen to a long-winded lecture. Well, relax, I'm not. I'll sketch in a general framework of Convair San Diego, so you'll have a rough idea of what goes on around here. Then I'll let you listen to some other people who can tell you more about Convair San Diego. So for a moment, take a good look at this aerial photo and imagine that you're looking out of the windows of one of our Convair liners as it approaches San Diego from an altitude of about 4,000 feet. If your imagination is working right, we are now looking at one of the fastest growing cities in America. And Convair is one of the chief reasons for this remarkable growth. Convair covers quite a bit of real estate all over the north side of San Diego. You'll notice an office building rearing up against the landscape. It's called Building 19. From this building flow the policies and decisions which have made the name Convair a trademark of superior quality throughout the world. Across Pacific Highway from Building 19 is the engineering heart of Convair's San Diego Division. We call this Plant One. It borders the highway for nearly a mile. Here, in the engineering buildings, more than 6,000 men and women work to keep Convair products a step ahead of the rest of the industry. Like every other man-made thing, an airplane is born in a human mind. But at that point, it's simply an idea, an idea that may or may not work. This one did. Making sure it will work is the function of Convair's engineering research and development section, which is actually a team of engineering specialists representing dozens of different fields.
Here in Plant 2, engineering research and development specialists spent 10 years on the planning stages of some of the Convair aircraft now in production. We had to make sure of all the answers because upon them may depend the life of the free world. Paralleling engineering research and development is manufacturing development. Once a new aircraft is ready to go into full production, we must have developed the necessary tools, equipment, and techniques for a swift, economical, and efficient manufacturing operation. Convair fabrication and subassembly shops contain millions of dollars worth of the finest machinery and equipment available to perform the increasingly complex operations vital to the manufacture of advanced aircraft. We've now moved on to building two, where commercial airliners are assembled and painted in preparation for the rigorous field and flight tests they receive before delivery to the customers. From this same assembly area came the new Convair Metropolitan 440, which has the distinction of being the quietest commercial airliner in operation today. And airwise people everywhere recognize this familiar Convair liner, long the standard of airlines, dedicated to speed, comfort, and dependability. Incidentally, this Air Force hospital plane, the Flying Samaritan, is one of the many different Convair liner models. Looking ahead to commercial aviation of tomorrow, Many of you may be working on the four-engine jet Convair transports, now being fabricated for delivery to several airlines. The 880, the world's fastest and most luxurious airliner, is a direct result of the forward-looking research, development, and manufacturing skills that have made Convair a leader in the aircraft industry. This program challenges all of us to give our best in efficient, quality workmanship. Now I can almost hear you asking, what about all those military aircraft? Well, Building 3 witnessed the construction of the gigantic Navy seaplanes called trade winds. They're mammoths of the air, capable of refueling four jets simultaneously. of landing troops on a distant beachhead. In Plant 2, which we saw a moment ago, many of you may soon be working on one of the finest, fastest, and most deadly supersonic interceptors yet to be developed in the entire world, the highly advanced F-106. Convair was a pioneer in the development of Delta Wing aircraft at a time when other aircraft manufacturers insisted it was impractical. Some manufacturers have now accepted the concrete evidence of the Delta Wing's advantages and are beginning to adapt it to their own designs. But Convair still leads. In this same pioneer tradition is the Pogo first vertical rising fighter type plane. The Sea Dart is another example of how Convair continues to forge ahead into the unknown. 
this Sea Dart was the first supersonic fighter-type water-based aircraft in the world.